Hi everyone and thank you for joining me today. Here we have is the Commodore 64. I purchased this um, approximately two years ago. I was so eager to get one because I've never actually had one before and uh, once I got it I got it home, put it in its box and left it on the shelf for a year. Um, so that's how excited I was to get it. So around last year I decided to um, get it out of its box set it all up and um, play a game but um, the problem we have is that it doesn't load from the um, tape cassette or the data cassette as or the um, data set as it's more commonly known as um, it doesn't matter what you want to call it you know exactly what I mean I'm sure so let's take a look at what's actually happening here so let's get it going so get it running Normally you would expect um, a confirmation to come up on the screen after a few seconds to say that it's found the um, the file or the data on the cassette and to confirm that it's loading. Um, but as you can see it just seems to be carrying on uh, playing. The tape's still going uh, but the screen remains blank uh, which is not a good sign. So. We'll just let it carry on and see what happens. Nothing much still, so I'm going to fast forward the video so we can see what happens. So nothing has happened. So this is a foul. This is the problem. So how are we going to fix it? Let's take a closer look at the tape player. So what I'm going to do is take it apart and have a look in the inside and give it a uh, inspection. Um, hopefully I won't find anything uh, dodgy inside but you never know. Um, the guy who I bought it from he had owned the machine since he was a kid and he hadn't played it for quite some time, probably well over 10, 15, maybe even 20 years. So during that time, you know, things can stop working, uh, things get stuck. So let's just take a look, see if there's anything unusual going on. So let's turn it over and there's four screws in the back. Let's undo those. Everything appears to look okay. There's nothing that looks like a major cause for concern, which is good. The rubber drive belt is in place. Um, it feels good. Doesn't seem like it's going to break at all, so that's another positive sign. I'm going to take the uh, cassette tape uh, holder out just so I can get a closer look inside as well. It all looks good so far. I'm going to take this um, shield off here just to see what's underneath. So I'm not sure what's lurking under there. Yeah, it all looks good. So I'll just put it back because um, there's no point leaving it off. So what I'm going to do now is clean the rubber parts on this um, tape deck. Um, so there are some rubber rollers and the rubber drive belt. Now what I have here is um, a platen cleaner. So many moons ago when I worked for a printer fax machine repair company, um, the all the engineers, they used this product to clean all the rubber rollers. I've seen some people use alcohol to clean the rollers, which is fine at, at the start of things. It's okay and it will get the grease and muck off, 
however it can dry the rubber out but this product here it actually rejuvenates the uh, rubber so it won't dry out it actually helps bring well effectively bring um, possibly slightly worn out rollers and rubber parts back to life so it gives that extra or well, gives it an extra long life which is good and I do have some alcohol too I'm going to use that to clean the tape head and any other little marks and blemishes that I may find and just to get rid of any loose bits of obvious dust and in fairness the tape deck's not in too bad of a condition there are a few marks on it which I hopefully I can remove but I'm not too fussed at the moment okay well let's get this thing back together this wire here is a little bit fiddly getting it back into its slot but we'll get there some of these marks are coming off which is good getting this tape cover back in is a bit fiddly um, it's probably the hardest bit so far more trouble than it's worth to be honest there we go at last and the last thing we're going to look at here is the um, tape deck connection which goes into the back of the C64 um, I've never seen these wires hanging off before um, I assume that's some kind of ground wire um, if anyone knows what it actually is or what you're supposed to do with it then uh, please comment uh, down below so looking inside uh, it appears to be okay there's nothing obviously well there's nothing wrong as such but yeah, there does seem to be a bit of um, it dirt and a bit of grime in there so I'm going to try cleaning it out um, I've got these cotton buds here but they're too fat to actually get in and to actually clean it properly I tried squashing it a bit with some pliers but they're still not thin enough to get inside so I've got my mini flathead screwdriver and I'm just going to try and see if I can well not scratch but kind of rub some of that dirt off a little bit successful it's made some improvement um, I don't think I really, really want to go too hard in it so I don't want to cause any damage so I'm going to leave it there okay let's put this part back together and we'll go and test it again okay so we'll put this back together here and um, we'll go and test the game out and see if it actually loads this time so here we go I'm loading it up uh, it's the same game again license to kill the James Bond based on the James Bond film uh, it's not a bad film if you haven't seen it um, it was Timothy Dalton's uh, last outing he only did two films first one was Living Daylight I digress so fingers crossed mm. well it's not looking good that's a little bit disappointing if I'm being honest um, doesn't seem to ah this is looking promising it's actually found data on the tape it's actually recognized it so here we are let's see what happens mm not looking good so far and it's fouled which is really disappointing to be honest I'm just gonna try this again and use the other side of the tape um, usually data is actually produced on both sides of the tape but I'm gonna do it on the other side and see what happens and nothing is the answer to that so right so the next step are uh, what I'm gonna do is clean the actual connectors on the back of the Commodore 64 where the actual um, where the tape deck actually connects onto um, it looks okay I mean it doesn't seem anything wrong it doesn't seem particularly dirty but as I mentioned before it hasn't been used for some time so um, I'm gonna clean it with some alcohol and um, see what happens so here we go take three let's see what happens okay good it's recognized the uh, tape it's found the files the data files uh, 
Oh, screen's gone blank. LTK. Ah, yes. This is much better. This is much better. I think we're making progress here. So this will take another two or three minutes. So I'm going to uh, fast forward this. And there we go. License to kill. It's worked. So cleaning those contacts has worked. Now, I suppose cleaning the back of the C64 may have been, in hindsight, um, the easier thing to do first. Um, but in this scenario, I don't, I don't think it, it would actually have fixed the problem initially. I think the right thing to do was to clean both the uh, tape deck connections and the connection on the back of the C64. Um, so I'm really pleased with the outcome of this. So I don't think I've mentioned it. So the reason why there isn't any sound is because the uh, screen I'm using is just a normal PC monitor. It doesn't have any speakers. So there's no actual errors at all now. If I was to hook it up to my TV, which I could, um, it will give a proper sound as well. Now I can't play the game properly because I don't have any joysticks and it doesn't seem you can uh, control this with the keyboard functions. So that actually sort of concludes this part of the video. Um, there's still a little bit more to come. Um, the other thing I wanted to try as well is to check the actual tape head alignments which you can do. This can actually be achieved by entering um, some code which I found online. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, type it all out and uh, see what the head alignment is actually like. Um, I don't think I'm going to make any adjustments, but I'll just be interested to see if it is in within the right range that it needs to be. So let's get typing all this out. Now I've pressed run to get the program going, but I keep getting this error. Um, question mark out of data error in 13. Now I've checked the line in 13 and I'm certain that what I've uh, wrote in there is what is supposed to be in there. There are no um, mistypes or anything like that like that at all. Um, I have typed it out again um, but it just doesn't seem to be working so maybe something else I've missed in the other lines of data. I may have mistyped something there. I'm going to try it again but um, not right now because um, I've been awake since five o'clock this morning and um, it's getting late and I think you know it's time to look at it again with a fresh head so we'll come back to this again shortly and um, get it going hi again thank you so I've had a nice night's sleep I've typed it well again so let's uh, run it and see what happens So looking at it, it appears that it's all good. Um, if you need more information on this, I'll put the links in the description below and I'll actually paste in the code so you can try it out yourself should you wish to. Um, I'll give you the, the source uh, of where actually I found this information. It's actually pretty good. So I didn't do this by myself. I didn't write this code, so I'm not taking any credit for it at all. But um, it's there for everyone to use and, and I'll put it in the description to make it easy, easier for you to find. So yeah, that concludes the video for today. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. And please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.